Good morning, everybody. Good morning. This is Evangelist Renee Sellers of the Upper Room Outreach Ministries in Waycross, Georgia. And we are live at 5 this morning on WHLJ 97.5 FM, Statenville, Valdosta, Moultrie, Georgia. We're also online this morning at Foxy, F-O-X-Y 97.com. And you can join us on the call at 712-770-4010, access code 266-590. There'll be a recap tonight at 7 p.m. on WHLJ. And this morning, we are also on Facebook Live. We're also on Facebook Live. And we're excited today to be discussing I am an overcomer. I am an overcomer this morning. I encourage you to text somebody, tag somebody, uh, call somebody, and let them know that we are live at 5 this morning for this Command Your Morning broadcast. Uh, before we begin our discussion this morning, it's Monday. Monday morning, people must be off work and out of school. I am going to ask uh, Pastor Gloria Moore Wright to open our broadcast with a word of prayer. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Heavenly Father, we bless you today. We give you glory, honor, and praise. We thank you, God, for all your Hallelujah. And all the benefits that you daily load us with. Thank you, Lord. We commit this broadcast to you today. Thank Father. you, Lord. We pray, God, that you would send your word forth. Lord, thank God, you, God. Thank you so much, Pastor Wright, to God be the glory for the things that he has done. We're going to go back and piggyback just a little bit as we just completed 31 days of prayer and fasting. I pray that you receive the breakthrough that you needed and whatever you petitioned the Lord for, that he did it for you during those 31 days of prayer and fasting. If he has not done it already, to God be the glory. Thank you so much for joining Facebook Live this morning. If God has not done it yet, somebody said God knows what he's doing. He knows what he's doing and delay is not denial. Somebody hashtag on Facebook that delay is not denial. If you're taking notes this morning uh, on, on, on the broadcast, somebody say delay is not denial. Write that down in your notes. Delay is not denial. We're going to go to Hebrews chapter 5 and verses 7 through 8. And we're going back to piggyback from last Thursday and Friday. Share my Facebook broadcast with your friends early this morning, live at 5. Uh, this motivational Monday broadcast. It says in Hebrews chapter 5, verses 7 through 8. It says, in the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to him who was able to save him from death. And he was heard for his godly fear. Although he was a son of God, he learned obedience 
by what he suffered. Somebody say, I am an overcomer this morning. He learned obedience by what he suffered. And I want to share a brief testimony for someone that we were praying for over the 31 days of prayer and fasting. A woman who was going through, she was diagnosed with leukemia. We were asked to pray for the woman of God. She was diagnosed and was sent to a hospital out of town. And I want to encourage you that the woman that we were praying for with leukemia, I need you to hear this. Uh, Facebook, command your morning. Those that are listening in South Georgia, North Florida, those that are watching again on Facebook Live, I need you to hear this. We were praying during our 31 days of prayer and fasting for this woman who was diagnosed with leukemia. And, and her, her daughter informed me that she went through the leukemia. I'm sorry, she went through the chemotherapy like a champ. And even while she was in the hospital, she and her husband were witnessing to the people. I need somebody to to say that she already knew she was an overcomer, even though she was suffering with leukemia. The, uh, her daughter told me that she and her husband was witnessing to everybody that came in the room. Now, if you ever find yourself in the hospital, are you willing to be a witness for Jesus even on your sick bed? Can you be a witness for Jesus even though you, you can't move and you can't go home? Are you willing to be a witness for Jesus even though, watch this now, you're going through a different situation. And for many of us, these situations, we don't understand. Somebody say, I am an overcomer because this woman realized who she was in order for her to witness to somebody else, even though she was going through chemotherapy. And so last Thursday and Friday on Command Your Morning, we started talking about the prayer life of Jesus Christ. The upper room, our, our, our value statement is to live love and lead like Jesus. Our value statement is to live love and lead like Jesus. And if we are going to live love and lead like Jesus, then we're going to have to represent him in every aspect. We're going to have to represent him in, in everything that we do. We are going to have to pattern our lives after the life and ministry of Jesus Christ. But it requires sacrifice. Uh, then it not only requires sacrifice, I'm getting a little ahead of myself in my notes. It requires sacrifice and it also requires suffering. It requires sacrifice and it also requires suffering. Are you willing to make the sacrifice even when the sacrifice requires you to suffer? Mm. We said the other day as we talked about uh, King Saul and how he disobeyed God and God stopped listening to him. And we said that obedience is better than sacrifice. But obedience often requires not only sacrifice, but suffering. Jesus learned obedience by what he suffered. Uh, somebody shout amen. He learned obedience by what he suffered. Hebrews 5 gives us three aspects of the prayer life of Jesus Christ. Hebrews chapter five verse seven and eight it tells us that jesus prayed with loud cries and tears it tells us that jesus was heard for his godly fear it tells us that jesus learned obedience by what he suffered and so on thursday we came from the subject of deep devotion anybody remember last thursday we came from the subject of deep devotion and jesus because of his lifestyle was deeply devoted to his father and in the hour that we are living in ladies and gentlemen in the midst of this pandemic if we are going to make it through we got to be deeply devoted to our father in other words whatever matters to god matters to us somebody say it matters to me hashtag it matters to me whatever matters to god it matters to us and on friday our subject was utter dependence utter dependence in other words jesus was utterly dependent on god and we define utter as complete complete and absolute. So Jesus was completely and absolutely dependent on God. What the word dependence in the English uh, uh, dictionary, it means the state of relying on or being controlled by someone or something else. One of the reasons that a lot of people struggle with obedience to God is because they don't like to be, con they don't want to feel like they're being controlled by somebody. Uh, one of the reasons that a lot of 
people don't want to give their lives to Christ is because they don't want to feel like they're being controlled by somebody. And, but the Bible says that he chases those that he loves. And if we, when we make Jesus Lord of our life, we give him control of our life. And one of the reasons that we need Jesus, watch this now. One of the, I don't know about you. Let me talk about myself this morning at 5 a.m. Let me talk about myself. One of the reasons that I needed Jesus and I still need Jesus is because my life trying to do it on my own was out of control. A lot of us live out of control lives and that's why we need Jesus. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us because many, he, he had to come, he had to die and it was necessary because many of our lives were out of control. You might not want to admit it for you, but I can admit it for me. Before Jesus, my life was out of control. And I needed him and I needed him. And that's why he had to come and he had to die and he had to suffer because many of us were living out of control lives. Another definition of dependence means to, it means being abnormally tolerant to and dependent on something that is psychologically or physically habit forming. Remember Friday, we talked about the different habits of Jesus. But dependence means being ab abnormally tolerant to and dependent on something that is psychologically or physically habit forming. And so Jesus was demonstrating to us three of his main habits and one of his habits was that he was in the habit of assembling together as noticed in Luke chapter 4 and 16. I don't want to go through and read all of them again but I'm going to read this real quick. Luke chapter 4 and verse 16 New King James Version. New King James Version of Luke chapter 4 and verse 16. Just a quick review from Friday before we go any further. We said that he, he had a habit of worshiping and verse 16 of Luke chapter 4 it says he so he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up and as his custom was in other words it was a habit for him he went into the synagogue on the sabbath day and stood up to read so jesus had a habit of assembling together he also had a habit of sharing the word of god and a lot of us miss great opportunities for evangelism because we have gotten out of the habit of of, of sharing the word of god i believe this pandemic has forced us to get back into that habit come on somebody i know we've been sheltered in place but many of us are getting back to assembling ourselves together with the saints. So I want to encourage you that as was the habit with Jesus, so should be the habit for you and me, for every believer, every follower of Jesus Christ. He was in the habit of sharing the word of God as Mark chapter 10 and verse one tells us, then he arose from there and came to the region of Judea by the other side of the Jordan and multitudes gathered to him again and as was a custom. It was a habit. As was a custom, he taught them again. It was a habit for Jesus to not only assemble, but it was a habit for Jesus to share the word of God. If we're going to live, love, and, and, and lead like Jesus, then we need to demonstrate the same habits that he had. Somebody say, I got to make it a habit. I got to make it a habit of assembling. I got to make it a habit of sharing the word of God. I got to make it a habit of prayer. We just came out of 31 days of prayer and fasting and our prayer life should not be the same as it was 31 32 now days ago our prayer life should be more intense our prayer language should be more intense we should be praying more strategically come on somebody the bible says as as jesus the bible says one of the disciples went to jesus and asked him lord teach us how to pray as john taught his disciples to pray somebody write down or write in your notes this morning that Prayer is a discipline. Prayer is something that can be taught. Uh huh. Prayer is something that, that had to be taught. So in order for us to learn to pray strategically and to learn to war in prayer and to learn to, to travail in prayer, to understand adoration and confession, to understand thanksgiving, to understand supplication, to understand intercession, we got to be willing to be taught. In other words, we got to be teachable. Somebody say, if I'm going to learn this, I got to be teachable. So Jesus had a habit of assembly. He had a habit of, of sharing the word of God. And Luke chapter 22 lets us know that Jesus had a habit 
or he had a strong prayer life. Is your prayer life stronger today than it was 32 days ago? In Luke chapter 22, verse 39 through 41, New King James, it says, in the New King James, it says, coming out, he went to the Mount of Olives, this place of crushing, and it, as he was accustomed. Once again, when you look at the word custom or accustomed, that represents the fact that this was a habit. This was something that was normal for Jesus. Come on, somebody. This was not something that was strange for him, and it was not something that he was forced to do. It was a habit for Jesus to, to spend time in prayer. And so ladies and gentlemen, watch this. We're getting ready for another election and we don't have to start praying on Monday. We don't have to start praying on the third. Those of us who are in the habit of prayer, we've been praying already. We've been praying for this election. We've been praying for the president. We've been praying for, for uh, uh, Mr. Biden. We've been praying, ladies and gentlemen, because we have made a habit of praying. We've made a habit of interceding. we made a Oh God, we have been in the habit of supplication. And so after these 31 days, 32 days of prayer and fasting, somebody say, I'm going to stay in the habit. This is going to be my custom. This is going to be my custom. So what was Jesus doing with all these habits of worship and the habit of sharing the word of God? The and what, watch this now. Many of our ministries would probably be packed out if those of us who follow Jesus would share the word of God share and evangelize. There are people in your office that need to know Jesus. There are people in the grocery store that need to know Jesus. There are people at the laundromat that need to know Jesus. That your next door neighbor needs to know. Does your next door neighbor know that you're saved? Your neighborhood needs to know Jesus. Watch this now. There are some cousins and some aunties and some family members that need to know Jesus. The, listen, the Bible declares that we are to compel people to come, but that His house may be full. The Lord wants his house filled with people that need to know Jesus, that want a relationship with Jesus, that can learn the habit of assembly, of sharing the word of God and the habit of prayer. Uh. Oh God, I know it's five o'clock in the morning, but I'm getting, oh God, when, when, when you truly love Jesus, it's not a, a burden to get up at 5 a.m. every day, live at five. Actually, I'm up way before 5 a.m. It's not a burden because it becomes a joy because when you love Jesus, no, it's not burdensome, ladies and gentlemen. So Jesus was demonstrating absolute, complete reliance on his father, both psychologically and physically. And for you and I, we've got to demonstrate that kind of dependence. We got to demonstrate absolute and complete. We got to demonstrate total reliance, both psychologically and physically, ladies and gentlemen. But this requires sacrifice and this requires suffering. Sacrifice. Because you have to deny yourself. You got to deny yourself to follow Jesus and suffering. Watch this, cut, my God, sister Lakeisha. Uh, suffering because not everybody is going to understand your need to gather for worship. Not everybody is going to understand your desire to share the word of God. Not everybody is going to understand why you want to make God, why you got to hurry up and get to the prayer meeting. Not everybody is going to understand why you go to Friday night service. Not every when there's a foot football game, when there's a championship game, not everybody's going to understand why you go to Sunday night service. Not everybody's going to understand why you teach like you do and preach like you do because you have made a decision to deny yourself, take up your cross and follow Jesus. Matthew chapter 16 and verse 24. Ah. It says, then Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone desires to come after me and, and Jesus is letting us know that denying ourselves and taking up a, 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 his cross and following him is something that must, is to be desired. Uh, it, it's something that, that is to be desired. Let me look up the word desire for just a moment. Let me look it up. The word desire, desire. Somebody say desire this morning. That word is a familiar word. Somebody say desire, desire, desire. What does this word desire mean? Let's look at the Greek definition of the word desire. That word desire in Greek, and I like to look at it in the Greek, 
That word desire means a passionate longing. Oh my. It's an eagerness for. It, it's an inordinate desire. Ladies and gentlemen, it, it, it means um, strong. I have an urge and I have a strong desire to follow Jesus. I have a strong desire to, to take up my cross. I got a strong desire to live a sold out life. Ladies and gentlemen, do you have a strong desire to follow Jesus? I believe this pandemic, if it wasn't there before, coronavirus is there now because there are people now that are giving their lives to Jesus because listen, this thing prompted their desire to follow him. Mm. God it prompted their desire. So he says, if anyone desires to come after me, if you desire, you got to deny. Somebody say, when I desire, I got to deny. Desire and deny. You got to deny yourself and take up his cross. Deny, take up, follow. Deny, take up, follow. First of all, we got to understand something about the cross. Something about the cross. The first, the cross, as we talked about on our series, Journey to the Cross, all those 25 days of Journey to the Cross, the cross was an instrument of death. Uh, write that down. If you're taking notes on Command Your Morning on the broadcast and on Facebook, that the cross was an instrument of death. And Jesus is telling his disciples, and it also applies to us today, that if we are going to be his followers, then following him is going to require total and complete commitment that Jesus is going to have to be priority. Your job can't come before Jesus. Your family can't come before Jesus. Money can't come before Jesus. Ask somebody who started putting money before Jesus and ask them, are they better off now than before? I guarantee you they'll tell you that, listen, I need Jesus. I'm trying to get back to Jesus because I left my first love when I started looking at the money. I left my first love when I started looking at this man. I left my first love when I started wanting to get, uh, pro listen, put more time in at the job. Ladies and gentlemen, the, uh, a revelation said I got something against you to the church of Ephesus. You have left your first love and so thereby in that series that we did of the journey to the cross we discussed the rejection that jesus endured we discussed the denial that Jesus endured. We discussed the mocking that he went through. They even spit on Jesus and they beat him with the crown of thorns on his head. They scourged him and they, they falsely accused him. We, we talked about the agony of the cross. I want you to go back to YouTube, to my YouTube channel and go back and pick up that series that we did, Journey to the Cross. Death on the cross was not a pretty thing, ladies and gentlemen. The Bible says that Jesus went through for us. Watch this. He did it for us and he was beaten so bad that he was unrecognizable as a man. He was unrecognizable. As a matter of fact, we got to understand that the death on the cross was not only agonizing. Somebody say it was humiliating. It was not an easy task for Jesus to do that. But somebody saying my apostle has a t-shirt I thought I had ordered that says it was nasty but necessary. And so Jesus went through it, but it was not, it was what he went through was nasty, but it was necessary. And you're going to go through to follow Jesus. There will be some suffering because you made the sacrifice. You chose and had a desire to follow Jesus. And somebody needs to understand that it was nasty what you went through. But it was necessary because you could not get promoted unless you went through what you went through. Ladies and gentlemen, the good thing about going through is that you coming out. Can somebody say I'm coming out on this motivational money? The good thing about going through is that you're coming out. Somebody say, I'm coming out. I'm coming out. I'm coming out. I'm coming out. And so Mark chapter 14 and verse 36. It wasn't an easy task for Jesus. And following him is not going to always be easy for us. The Bible says in Mark 14, 36. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Take this cup away from me. Nevertheless. Not what I will, but what you want. Not, not my will, 
but thy will be done. Remove this cup from me. All things are possible for you. There is nothing that is too hard for you. There is nothing that you can do, my father. But 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 uh, listen, I, I listen. Remove this cup from me. But but not my will, not what I want, not what I desire, but what you desire, God. Your will be done, Jesus said. All things are possible for you. But I'm struggling with this thing right now, God. All things are possible for you. But I'm struggling to forgive right. Now I'm struggling to bless my enemies. I'm struggling to get past the rejection of my friends. This is a struggle for me, God. You are sovereign. There's nothing you can't do. You are sovereign. There's nothing too hard for you. You God, you my father. You you can do anything, but I'm struggling with this. Is there anybody that can write in that the struggle is real? The struggle is real. I, I've been struggling with some things. I've been struggling with the rejection. I've been struggling with the sabotage. I've been struggling with the lies. I've been struggling with the false accusations. I've been, I've been struggling with this thing in this pandemic. When, when, when people that are supposed to be with me, I don't even see them anymore. When people that said they'll never leave me suddenly left me out of fear. And, and oh God, I, I want to encourage you. Oh God, uh, this thing is, is easy for you, God, but it's a struggle for me. Uh, Jesus, because of his obedience. Or open ear as Friday, we discussed the fact that obedience means open ear. And so when we are obedient to God, we have an open ear to God. We talked about Adam and Eve. And one of the reasons that they would allow themselves to be deceived is because their ear was open to the enemy and closed to the will of God. God had already given the instructions, but they closed their ear to God when they were deceived by the enemy. Somebody said, I will not be deceived in 2020 going into 2021. I will not be deceived even with what's going on in this heated political climate. I will not be deceived, but I'll be discerning. I need somebody to shout amen. I will not be deceived. I'll be discerning. Jesus, because of his obedience or open ear to his father, declares not my will, but thy will be done. When he called out father, he didn't say God. He said father, a father. Somebody say father this morning. Write in your notes, father this morning. When he said father, he is acknowledging his position as a son. And so when we resolve to the will of the father, uh, sister Lakeisha, we acknowledge our position as obedient children. And first Peter chapter one and verse 14 says, as obedient children, not conforming yourselves to the former lust as as in your ignorance. First Peter 1 14. In other words, behave like obedient children and don't let your lives be controlled by wrong desires. Because Jesus said, if you desire, take up your cross, deny yourself, follow me. But there are some people that are being influenced by wrong desires, as was the case with Adam and Eve. Influenced by wrong desires deceived and, and and he manipulated their mind he he manipulated their mind when they get when he when she allowed him to get in the in her ear and so i want to encourage you don't allow yourself to be manipulated by listening to the wrong voice not in this season and somebody said i won't allow myself to be manipulated i won't listen to the voice of the enemy i will not hear the voice of a stranger oh, oh god the day you hear my voice pastor uh, said this yesterday the lord says harden not your heart i will not enter the voice of the enemy, but I'm going to adhere to the voice of God. My ear will be open, obedient, attentive to the voice of my father. Quick break for station ID. We are live at five on WHLJ on this command your morning broadcast with the subject. I am an overcomer. We are live at five on WHLJ. 97.5 FM, Statenville, Valdosta, Moultrie, Georgia. We're also online this morning at Foxy, F-O-X-Y, 97.com. We're also on Facebook Live this morning, and this recording will be available on YouTube and Spreaker.com. I encourage you to like my YouTube channel and like my Spreaker podcast. So in other words, behave like obedient children. Don't let your lives be controlled by the wrong desires. Come on, somebody. Don't, don't let your lives be controlled by the wrong desires. Don't let your life be controlled by money. Uh, listen, that stimulus check going to run out of 
eventually. It's probably done already run out. Don't, don't let your lives be controlled by that, but let your life be controlled and influenced by the word of God and by the power of God and by your love for God. So my desire is to do the will of the father. My desire is to do what he asked me to do. Deny yourself, take up your cross and follow Jesus. What does that mean? That means I got to die to myself. I got to die to self. I got to die to selfish desires. And so Jesus said in Luke chapter nine, verse 24 through 25, he said, for whoever would save his life, will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake, for my sake, for me, will save it. For what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses or forfeits himself or his soul? I see so many, even it, it not all celebrities, but a lot of people that are that are literally, listen, profiting and profiting from the things of this world, but are not even thinking about God. The, I, the, what Jesus is saying is nothing should be more important than me. Uh. It, it, it means it means it, it nothing should be more important than me. In other words, if it means I'm going to lose eternal life, it, it, if it means that I'm going to miss eternal life, listen, no job, no family, nothing, no friends is more important than God. And so in yesterday's message, Pastor Sellers acknowledged the work that a lot of us were doing in the church. He called out several people and he acknowledged the hard work that we're doing for the church. He said that they do it well, but they do it without pay. While we should sow into our leaders, the, the Bible uh, uh, says let the elders that rule well, they are worthy of double honor. Yes, we should sow into our leaders. We should sow into those that are doing the work of the kingdom. We got to understand that the work that we do in the earth, there, listen, there are some earthly rewards, but there are also eternal rewards. While we should sow into leaders, we got to understand that we don't need to get discouraged because there are eternal rewards. And Apostle Paul said in 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 6 through 9, we get ready, to, uh, get ready to, our time is almost up. He says in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 6 through 9, he says, for I am already being poured out like a drink offering and the time for my departure is near. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. And so you will watch this now. When we get ready to leave this earth and spend eternity with the Lord, will we be able to say, I have finished, I have fought the good fight? Will we be able to say, I have finished the race? Will we be able to say, I have kept the faith? In other words, will we be able to say, I finished my assignment and I was faithful until the point of death. I was faithful and obedient until the point of death. Paul says, now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness. Because remember, Apostle Paul spent a lot of time in prison. He wrote many letters from prison. He says that I, now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. And so people may never acknowledge and appreciate what we do. But somebody say, but God. But God is keeping records of your faithfulness. I need somebody to remember that. Listen, Sunday school teacher, you may never, you may never be acknowledged, but God is keeping records of your faithfulness. Come on, pastor. They may never say thank you, pastor, for what you did for me, but God is keeping records of your faithfulness. Come on, come on, deacons. They may never say I thank you for serving, but God is keeping records of your faithfulness. Listen, the person that you led to Christ may never remember your name, but God is keeping records of your faithfulness. Faithfulness. I need somebody to hashtag that God is keeping records of my faithfulness <laughs> because my faithfulness because of the because I wanted to be faithful and had a desire to be faithful. I recognize that it requires sacrifice and suffering and not everybody's going to pre appreciate the sacrifice that you make. Eternal rewards will never fade away. Eternal rewards will never collect dust. Eternal rewards can never be stolen. And Pastor Seller said to us yesterday as he talked about the harvest is plentiful but the labors are few. He said work it. He said work it. Somebody write down work it 
this morning. But serving the Lord requires us to, if we're going to work it, if we're going to be diligent, if we're going to be effective, then we got to sacrifice. We got to deny ourselves. Pastor Sellers brought up the rich young ruler as we get ready to close. The subheading in the New King James says that Jesus counsels the rich young ruler in Matthew 19. Jesus counsels the rich young ruler and the rich young ruler did not want to adhere to the counsel of Jesus Christ. He did not want to adhere. Some of y'all are taking our counseling class on Thursday night. Some of y'all are being certified Christian counselor through our school. The, 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 the rich young ruler did not want to adhere to the counsel of Jesus. When he asked, what must, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus told, go to Matthew 19. I'm not going to read it for you this morning. Go to Matthew 19. When, when he asked, what must I do to eternal life? Jesus gave him wise counsel, but the things of the world were more important than the counsel of Jesus Christ. And there are many people that miss the blessing because the things of this world are more important than the counsel of Jesus Christ. How do we count? Are we counseled by Jesus Christ in this hour? We are counseled through the word of God in our classes on Monday night. Matter of fact, tonight at seven o'clock, we talk about preaching. It's like a big counseling group that we're literally ministering to the minds of people. And so thereby Jesus was ministering to his mind, but his mind was on the things of this world and so thereby this young man heard what Jesus said and he went away sorrowful for he had great possessions the rich young ruler wanted eternal life but he struggled to let go of the things of this world he wanted eternal life but he didn't want to die to self somebody said the call is tough and several have said that obedience to God, obedience to the commands are not always easy. Somebody said that the call is tough, but the eternal reward is well worth the temporary pain. I need somebody to understand that this thing is only temporary. It says the eternal rewards are worth the temporary pain, the temporary pain of the lie, the temporary pain of the rejection, that the, the eternal rewards will be worth it, ladies and gentlemen, for my light afflictions are but for a moment. Ah, oh God, my light afflictions are but for a moment. We got to understand that Jesus never misled those who followed him. He didn't make them think that this walk was going to be easy. Nobody told me that the road would be easy. But the song says, I don't believe he brought me this far to leave me. And I want to encourage you this morning that Jesus did not bring you this far to leave you. As a matter of fact, he will never leave you nor forsake you. Uh -huh. He acknowledged that, that, that there will be trials in, in this walk. He acknowledged that, that you got to make sacrifices. And, and, and he let us know that sacrifice and service comes with a price. Sacrifice and service comes with a price. The, but the eternal rewards are greater. One thing Jesus promised is that he promised that we shall overcome in John 16, 33. He says, I have told you this, that you might have peace in your hearts because of me, not because of the money, not because of the world, not because of this election, but that we might have peace in our hearts because of him. He says, while you are in the world, you will suffer. But be of good cheer. <laughs> I have overcome the world. Can somebody say I am an overcomer? He said be of good cheer. Listen, don't be frustrated about who wins the election. Don't be frustrated about what's going, what the statistics are concerning this virus. Don't be frustrated. Jesus said in this life, listen, he said you will suffer, but be of good cheer. I need somebody to rejoice in the Lord always. The Bible says in everything give thanks. We're not happy about it. But we got to give thanks in it. Somebody shout amen. And John chapter 14, verse 15 through 16, it says, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper. So, believer, you are not without help. You are not without assistance. You don't have to do this by yourself. We got the help of Holy Spirit. And in and, and, and Galatians chapter 5, I want to go. Galatians chapter 5, New, New Living Translation of Galatians chapter. 
chapter 5 and verse 22. New Living Translation, Galatians chapter 5. Somebody say, I'm not without help. I'm not without help. I'm not without help. He really don't did not lead me to do this by myself. Oh God, he didn't lead me to love by myself. He didn't lead me to have patience by myself. Galatians 5, 22. I like the New Living Translation because the New Living Translation says it this way. It says, but the Holy Spirit produces. In other words, my helper enables me to love. My helper enables me to have joy. My helper enables me to have peace in the midst of the storm that all of us are in. My helper enables me to have patience when when the flesh really want to show out. My helper, oh God, enables me to be kind when I really want to be mad at somebody. My helper enables me to be good when I really want to pay repay evil for evil. My helper enables me to be faithful, gentle, and have self-control. The word of God says in John 14, I, I, that he will give you, my father will give you another helper to be with you. How long? John 14 says forever. Somebody say forever, forever and ever. Amen. This helper, John, I need y'all to write down John 14 verses 15 through 16, because if you don't need it today, you're going to need it next week. He will give you another helper to be with you. Not, not for temporary, but forever. Somebody say forever and ever. And James 1 and 12 says, blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial for when he has stood the test he will receive the crown of life which God has promised to those who love him if you love him ladies and gentlemen there are rewards that are waiting for you when you stand the test I am an overcomer this morning so we got to understand that I am an overcomer because of Jesus I am an overcomer because of the price that he paid I am an overcomer because as Jesus as he is so are we in this world can somebody shout amen and say no matter what what I go through, I've already overcome because Jesus told me to be of good cheer because he has overcome the world. I am an overcomer today. I am more than a conqueror. I am a royal priesthood. And when we are priests, we have access to God. Revelation says we are kings and priests. And as a king, we have authority. As a priest, we have access. And so ladies and gentlemen, somebody say, ain't no need to worry what tomorrow's going to bring. It'll be all over in the morning. Oh God, in the morning right now, joy comes in the morning. It's morning, ladies and gentlemen. And I want to encourage you to rejoice, 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 rejoice. I am an overcomer. Hallelujah. I am an overcomer. So as we get ready to close this morning, as we get ready to wrap up this morning, I just want you to be encouraged with John 16 and 33. Jesus is letting us know to be of good cheer. He has overcome the world. He listen, be of good cheer and and, and 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 rejoice. No matter who wins the election tomorrow, be of good cheer and rejoice. No, no matter what's going on, ladies and gentlemen, listen, it is not about party, it's about Jesus. It's not about who listen, no matter who wins. Listen, we still people, we're still uh, members of the body of Christ, and we are still people that know how to pray, know how to get a prayer through, that know the word of God. We are still overcomers, no matter who wins. We're still overcomers. And so, Father, we bless your name this morning. Lord God, we give you glory for you are our Father which art in heaven and holy is thy name. Father, we bless your name this morning for you are good and you're merciful, God. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be adored. Lord, we bless your name this morning, God, in the name of Jesus as we rise up early every morning. Hallelujah. Live at 5 a.m. 
Lord God, we rise early to make known our adoration to you, Father. Oh God, we thank you for that your mercies are new every morning. We thank you for new grace and we thank you for new mercy. Father, we bless your name this morning, Father, for you are sovereign, Lord God. We bless your name that all things are under your control. There is nothing, as Jesus said, there is nothing that is impossible for you. And we give you glory, God. We give you glory. We give you glory and we give you praise. Oh, in the name of Jesus, Father, we honor you this morning for you're a good God. You're an awesome God. You're omnipotent God. You're all powerful and all sufficient. Father, we make known an adoration as Jesus said, oh God, to this is how we are to pray our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed or holy is thy name. We exalt your name, Father, right now. We lift up your name, God, in the name of Jesus, for you are El Elyon. You are, oh God, Jehovah Shammah. You will never leave us, oh God, nor forsake us. Yo, God, we thank you that our helper will be with us forever, and we bless your name for that this morning. Our helper will keep us, oh God, oh God, in the name of, help us to be obedient as dear children. Our helper will keep, oh God, help us to have joy. Our helper will enable us to be patient. Our helper will enable us to have self-control. We thank you for our helper this morning. Our helper enabled us to get up early this morning when we really wanted to stay asleep, oh God, when we really wanted to sleep in. Father, we bless your name, God. We have a desire to please you, Father, for you are, oh God, Jehovah Shalom. And we bless your name that you are at peace this morning, that peace that surpasses all understanding. We will not give in to the fear tactics of the media. We will not give in to the, to the uh, propaganda that is inciting fear into the minds of people. But Lord God, we thank you as Paul said to Timothy that you have not given us the spirit of fear, but a power and love and a sound mind. And we thank you for a sound mind today, God, that we will not be conformed to this world, but we thank you that we are transformed by the renewing of our mind. We thank you right now, God, that transformation is taking place even now as the word of God is being revealed, oh God, and ministered in the minds of people. We thank you right now that, oh God, revelation leads to transformation. And we give you thanks, God, that we, oh God, have revelation and transformation. And we will not conform. We not conform right now, God. We will not give in or live according to the standards of this world. But Lord God, we'll live according to the standards that are set in your word. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, Father, we lift you up and we lift up your name right now, God, for you are our peace. And right now, God, we thank you for peace in our nation. We thank you for peace even after tomorrow's election. We declare peace in our land. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, that you will be the Lord of the White House, that you will be the Lord of the Senate, that you will be the Lord in, Lord in Washington, D.C. We thank you as your word declares that blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Oh God, we thank you right now that you are Lord of Lords and King of Kings that our power is in your hand, that you will be the Lord of our next president, Father. We come against every agenda of the enemy. We come against every agenda from hell that seeks, oh God, to turn people away from you. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, we declare that our leaders will make decisions, Lord God, that are led by the helper or your spirit. We ask you to turn the heart of the king to you, Father, that everything, every legislation and every bill, oh God, everything they do, Father, will be things that please you. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you for the power of prayer. We know that prayer works, Lord God. Unknown us to pray without ceasing. Your word declares that man ought to always pray and not lose heart. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, we would not lose heart. We would not faint. We would not be in fear, Father. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, Father, but we be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that our labor, our suffering, our sacrifice is not in vain. Oh, we bless you. We bless you. We bless you right now, Father. In the name of Jesus, we come against every entity. We come against every organization that is not like you. Oh God, in the name of Jesus right now, God, we ask, oh God, that you cover us and protect us. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you right now, God, for dispatching angels to minister and war on our behalf. We give you praise right now, God, as Psalm 91 declares, no evil shall befall us, neither shall any plague
plague come not our dwelling. For you give your angels charge over us to keep us in all our way. We thank you, oh God, that you're keeping us right now. We thank you that you protect us. We thank you that you see our needs and provide. We bless your name right now, God, for you are Jehovah Jireh. Oh God, you are Jehovah Jireh. You see what we need and you are our provider. We bless your name right now for you are Jehovah Rohi. You are our shepherd and we shall not want for any good or beneficial thing. Oh God, for you are the God of whom nothing is impossible. Oh, in the name of Jesus, if we're willing and obedient, we can eat the good of the land. No good thing will you withhold from them that walk uprightly. And Lord, we ask you to enlarge our territory and bless us indeed. Enlarge our territory and bless us indeed. Even in the midst of this pandemic, we are determined to prosper. We can prosper in this pandemic, God. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, we lift you up. In the name, oh God, we come against every word curse. Oh God, everything that has been released, oh God. Oh God, your word declares that death and life is in the power of the tongue. And we come against every word, oh God, that is speaking into the atmosphere about what is good, the negative things that are going to happen concerning this virus. And Lord God, we declare right now, Father, in the name of Jesus, that every assignment of the enemy, oh God, oh God, to, to, to incite fear is canceled in Jesus' name. We declare right now, God, in the name of Jesus, that every assignment of the enemy to bring premature death, oh God, is canceled in the name of Jesus. We declare right now that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. And every tongue that rises against us in judgment, you shall condemn. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, Father, help us to not be moved by what we see in the natural. Oh God, we're determined to only be moved by your spirit. We're determined, oh God, to walk in obedience to your word. We're determined, Lord God, to look unto to the hills from whence cometh our help. Knowing that our help come from you, oh God. We thank you as the psalmist said, you are our strength. You are our refuge. You are our present help right now. And we lean and depend on you, oh God. No other help we know, Father. We give you praise, God, in the name of Jesus. And we thank you right now, God, for another opportunity, another chance to give you glory, another chance to give you praise, another chance to magnify your name. Anything in us that's not like you, we ask you to forgive us. We ask you to purge and cleanse us of any and all unrighteousness. As David said, creating us a clean heart and renewing us a right spirit, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Father. Oh God, we want to do what is pleasing in your sight. In the name of Jesus, we bless your name. As oh God, the rich young ruler was sorrowful. He didn't want to give up his possessions. Lord God, we are fully committed to you. We are determined to be fully committed to you. We are determined not to let our fire burn out, God. We are determined not to leave our first love. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we bless you right now, fathers. We study your word. And known us to study your word and meditate on it day and night. That as we read your word, it will be engrafted into our spirit. That it will be renewing our minds, oh God. That we have the mind of Christ. That our mind is renewed daily right now, Father. In the name of Jesus, that today shall be a good day. Today shall be a great day. That we will rejoice in the Lord, oh God. We will rejoice in the Lord. We will give thanks in every circumstance. For this is your will for our life. In the name of Jesus, we thank you right now that we are overcomers. We thank you right now that we are more than conquerors. We thank you right now, God, that we are your children. We bless your name, Father, that we are the head and not the tail. That we are above and not beneath. That we are lenders and not borrowers. God, we give you praise. We give you praise right now, God, in the name of Jesus. That we shall have whatever we say. Death and life is in the power of our tongue. We give you praise, Father. And we give you glory, Lord God, that the battle is already won. We have the victory through Christ Jesus. Oh, the battle is already won, Lord God. Oh God, we thank you that everything you promised us, oh God, in your word, that your word would not return unto you void, but it shall accomplish what it was set out to do. In the name of Jesus, oh God, we thank you that we are healed with the stripes of Jesus. We thank you that the blessings of the Lord make it rich and add no sorrow. We thank you right now, God, in the name of Jesus, oh God, that our children are blessed, our family is 
saved. Our spouses are saved. Our marriages are flourishing. In Jesus' name, we pray, God. We give you glory. We give you glory, Lord God, and we bless your name. Oh, God, that those, oh, God, that sent up prayer requests, that you shall live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. We declare right now supernatural increase until the next rapture in the name of Jesus. We declare that God's favor is on your life, on Facebook Live, and on your life, on the conference call. We declare right now that God's favor is on you today in the name of Jesus. Somebody needs to say, God, your favor is on me. Your favor is on my family. Your favor is on my ministry. Your favor is on my marriage. Your favor is on my children. Your favor is on my house. Your favor is on my co-workers. Your favor is on my workplace. God's favor is on you today. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, you got favor with God and favor with man. Favor with God and favor with man. Somebody ought to rejoice this morning and give God praise for favor, favor, favor. Somebody give God praise for favor as we get ready to release this call, as we get ready to release command your morning today, as we get ready to release the line this morning. Oh God, we thank God for favor. We thank God for favor. And we never want to close any broadcast without giving somebody an opportunity to receive Jesus as Lord of their life. And it starts with a simple prayer that says, Father, it is written in your word that if I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in my heart that you've raised him from the dead, I shall be saved. Therefore, Father, I confess that Jesus is my Lord. I make him Lord of my life right now today. I renounce my past life with Satan and close the door to all of his devices. I thank you for forgiving me of all my sins. Jesus is my Lord and I am a new creation. Old things have passed away. Now all things are new. In Jesus name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, we want to say welcome to the body of Christ. And we want to encourage you to say, Lord, plant me where you want me to grow. And allow that ministry to nurture you, to train you, to help uh, encourage you in the name of Jesus, in the word of God. I want to encourage you that you are an overcomer through Christ Jesus. Motivational Monday on Command Your Morning Today. We'll be back on Facebook every Monday from now on. And on Command Your Morning on, on WHLJ every weekday live at 5. If you'd like to sow into what our ministry, if you'd like to sow into us, you can go to the upperroomwaycross.com and click on the link to give through PayPal or Givelify. Sow into this word this morning. Oh, be, as, as the Lord has blessed you, be a blessing to the kingdom. God bless you, everybody. God keep you. We're on the conference call every morning, Monday through Friday, on the radio every morning, Monday through Friday, on Facebook Live starting today. We're going to be on Facebook every Monday live at five. Have a great day, everybody. Thank you, Facebook. Thank you for listening on Command Your Morning. Those on the call, please remain on the line.